Hello and uh, good afternoon from the east coast of Australia here. Um, my, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Darren Britton. I am the National Assistive Technology Project Officer for the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on Education and Training, that is ADSET for short. Uh, this webinar is being live captioned um, and to activate the captions, click on the CC button in the toolbar that's located either on the top or bottom of your screen. We also have uh, live captions available via a browser um, and Kylie will add a link to that into the chat box for you. I'd like to start by first acknowledging uh, the Lutrawitta, the Australian Aboriginal land on which ADSET is hosted. I'm coming to you uh, from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation here in Victoria. Um, in the spirit of reconciliation, ADSET respectfully acknowledges First Nations peoples and pays respects to elders past, present and future, and to the many Aboriginal people that did not make elder status. I also acknowledge all countries participating in this webinar and also acknowledge their elders and ancestors and their legacy to us and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders that are participating in this webinar today. Today's webinar on accessibility in Office 365, Language and Communication is presented by Andrew Bowser, Educational Success Manager at Microsoft. And Andrew will be showcasing the accessibility features that are built into Microsoft Office. And we'll be discussing vast array of assistive technology products that are designed for individuals who have a language and communication disability. Uh, before we begin, just a few short housekeeping details. This webinar is being live captioned uh, by Michelle from Bradley Reporting. Um, and the recording of this will be available on the EdSet website in a few days. If you have any technical difficulties, like my dog growling at me right at the moment, um, then please email admin at adset.edu.au. That's admin at adcet.edu.au. This presentation um, is, will run for about 60 minutes or so with enough time for 20 minutes questions at the end. Throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat box with us and uh, to chat with each other. But please remember to choose all panelists and attendees so that we can read what you have to say. Um, and Andrew will be happy to answer questions at the end. If you have specific questions, uh, please put those into the Q&A Q&A box rather than the chat box so that we can address those. Um, thank you again for joining us all and I'll pass over to you, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you so much. Lovely to be here, everybody. Really appreciate you joining in for our Accessibility in Office 365 Language and Communication uh, for today, taking the time out and joining us. So my name is Andrew Bowser. I am a male in my mid-30s with brown, spiky-ish hedgehog-like hair and a dark Microsoft uniform. Uh, and I go down by the pronouns of he or him. Uh, so I am an education success manager here at Microsoft. My contact details are there on screen, andrew.bowser at microsoft.com. And my job is basically to upskill everyone uh, that uses Office in a range of different needs and desires. So sometimes it's making Office more accessible for admin, staff, and students. Other times it's upskilling, right, uh, within the Office suite so you can do more with productivity and communication. Now, today is all about language and communication as an assistive tool for not only those that have learning needs, but also to support those that have a disability as well. Now, we do encourage this to be an assistive tool webinar as I use these tools all the time. Even though I might not have a disability per se, I do have a learning need. I believe everyone has a learning need just to make things a bit more accessible from a day-to-day -day basis. Now, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which I'm presenting to you from today. I'm here in Awabakal land in Newcastle, and I pay my respect to elders past and present and their future importance to Aboriginal Australia. Now, we do have a bit of an agenda today, okay? So if I zoom in here, as you can see, I use these accessible tools on a day-to-day -day basis, even when presenting. I'm going to start off by talking about accessibility at Microsoft. Okay, uh, we have a vast array of accessible uh, options that cover neurodiversity, vision, hearing, built into Windows, built into Office, built into the web. Um, so we, we really do have a lot of groundbreaking, uh, forward thinking 
uh, I guess, approaches to accessibility, which I'm very excited to share with you. Uh, and then we'll jump into, I guess, the main part of today where we look at language and communication with the windows, ease of access and accessibility that you can see here. Okay. Now, why windows ease, ease of access and accessibility on our language and communication? Well, generally, that's the first port of call to make everything on your device, particularly a Windows device, accessible for language and for communication. And as, as we look at languages, they can come in many different mediums and texts and formats. Same thing with communication, whether it's reading or writing or speaking and listening. I'm just going to quickly go through the accessibility checker. Now, I'm sure you know about accessibility checker, but we do have it across many of our expanded apps, such as OneNote and Sway. I'm sure you know about it in, in Word and PowerPoint, but I will just uh, highlight where that is going and how we're using the power of AI to make things a bit more, let's call it future-proof, right? Because generative AI that comes with our current form of accessibility checker can be a little hit and miss. So uh, I'm going to talk about some improvements there. And then, of course, at our last half of the session, I'm going to talk about language and speech tools that you can access across Office, obviously, on top of the Ease of Access Center or the Accessibility Center that will help yourself, but also students become more inclusive to their learning environment. Okay, now I understand you are a tertiary uh, environment, and all of these tools will translate to those students, especially that don't speak English as a primary language, but may speak English as a primary language, but needs clarity, conciseness, formality, and support like I do when consuming information, okay? Uh, I have noticed as I start to get older because I work in IT, I'm starting to, to get some, uh, I'm not gonna call it RSI just yet, but I am using my vocal languages a lot more to do a lot of typing and a lot of input mechanisms to communicate. Right. I am using a lot of our immersive reader tools to declutter my environment because I suffer personally from spatial crowding. Same thing with read aloud as well. So I can process information in different mediums. We do live in this era of, of podcasts. Um, so you can actually see that even if you don't have a particular uh, learning need in an area, a lot of these tools will become second nature just to process information there as well okay okay so let's uh, oh and then of course we'll, we'll talk about the resources as we go through uh let's talk about this uh welcome to our introduction on microsoft i do want to say that uh this is being recorded okay so please do not stress if we go a little bit too fast or if you miss something, because the way I like to present is to ensure that you will get a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. And I want you to sit back, relax, and become aware of some of the tools that we have here at Microsoft around accessibility, language, and communication. Don't worry about trying to follow, because that's when the recording will come into play. I call it a play and pause. So I will highlight some of these key features that you have access to. And then when you'd like to dive a little bit deeper, check out some of the resources, watch some of the videos and keen aesthetically go and explore the features. That's when I would advise the play and pause situation comes in when you have access to that video. So it will feel like a lot of information and it will feel very fast paced, but I just really want to emphasize that this will be designed as a play and pause. So sit back, relax, be involved, ask your questions, and uh, I'll make sure that you do get a copy of this PowerPoint and, of course, the recording. So you can go through it at your own tailored pace and time. Okay. So at Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person, every organization on the planet to achieve more. And our CEO that you can see right there, okay, Sachin Nadella, is a huge leader with accessibility here at Microsoft. And when we design our applications, whether it's Windows or Office, we focus on ensuring that we can cover learning, visual, hearing, mobility, neurodiversity, and mental health. And I actually have tabs, uh, which I'll bring across, that cover nearly every one of these aspects. So if I bring, for example, my little browser on, on the screen here, 
can actually see on a regular basis. I have a number of different resources that covers all of our pillars. Now, it is a little bit out of the scope of today's session, obviously, to cover all of those aspects there. But it's also very good to know that, you know, using Microsoft technologies, we do cover a lot of these aspects here. And we even have a accessibility sway, okay? And I'll make sure, again, you do get a copy of this PowerPoint so you can go through and explore a lot of these in your own time, okay? Now, I'm sure you've seen that, obviously, in a previous uh, session with one of our colleagues, Connor McCall. But uh, for teaching and learning, obviously, for students as well, um, and, and for teachers, we have tools such as Immersive Reader, tools such as Word Prediction, Dictate, Editor, and Ease of Access, all that play a really important role around language and communication. And you can actually see here, a lot of our, uh, our needs can be invisible, right? Um, and these are some great stats from the World Health Organization that we, you know, we, we absolutely abide by on why accessibility is so important across Microsoft, Windows and Office. And as an educator myself, I was a high school teacher for 10 years, I had to use accessibility features in every school I went to. We have a statistic that says virtually 100 schools, 100%, I should say, and that's virtually, need some form of assistive technology. Okay. Now we do have our Microsoft learning table availability or matrix. Okay. And this on screen is basically a matrix table. Imagine a periodic table of elements that highlights how different forms of language and communication can go through um, all of our Office 365. And our goal is to fill this table up with every app that we have at Microsoft, okay? So on the left-hand side, you can see where we support read aloud, word highlighting, spacing, font size, page colors for those that might need assistive overlays, syllables within words, right? And this does translate very much to higher ed, okay? Especially for those that are learning English or might, might come from a background um, culture. Line focus, I needed that one right? Take away the distractions and the clutter parts of speech, picture dictionary to visualize the word. So principal, for example, am I referring to the principal of school? I'm referring to the principal of a story, right? So adding context and visual context and visual imagery really does help. Translation, and then we have some numeracy aspects above dictation. And you can see everything from Word, OneNote, PowerPoint, Flipgrid, Teams, Forms, Whiteboard, um, edge, edge we, we are putting it absolutely everywhere, okay? And we will talk about these because they all cover language and communication. Everything from using our new translation feature, I'm not sure you've seen that. I'm going to show you that today. It's very exciting. I'm sure you've seen Office Lens before. And, and do let us know if you would like a dedicated session on anything you're seeing today. You can speak to the leadership team and we can definitely organize that there as well. So as we go through, you know, I'm going to highlight some of these key key functions here. And we, we are going to start with Windows, right? Because that is your core OS that generally is, and I understand there are some Mac users out there, and I understand there are some different devices, but um, Windows generally is the dominant operating system in the world. So I'm going to uh, showcase how language and communication can be powered through our ease of access if you're using Windows 10. That's what we call it, ease of access center. Or if you're planning to, which you will be, because most people will upgrade uh, and organizations will upgrade as we move forward, use the accessibility center in Windows 11. Now, don't stress because they are the same. It's just that Windows 11 adds more functionality as every Windows development goes through. Okay. Now, we are going to hear from John. A lot of the accessibility features built at Microsoft are designed and built and really frameworked around those that have disabilities, which I think is some of the most empowering aspects that we can do is, is have them design the features needed for an accessible um, workplace and obviously teaching and learning environment, of course. So this goes for about two minutes. I'm just going to hit play and I'll watch this lovely video. We certainly hear that there are things that we can do better and gaps that we need to close. 
we don't just want to stop there. We want to really push beyond closing gaps to delivering that delight across the board. No matter what your abilities are to be able to use Windows like everyone else. Accessibility on Windows used to be called ease of access. We talked to people in our research studies and we're like, do you know what this means? And people are like, no, I don't know. One of the things that we did is we changed the icon. And the most important thing is that people could discover the things that would help them use Windows better. You can't just go into it assuming you know who you're designing for. In the accessibility community, there is a saying, nothing about us without us. The only way to solve these problems is by integrating deeply with the community of people that we're trying to serve. We heard that contrast themes were kind of like a hammer. The aesthetics shouldn't have to be compromised just because you are someone who has light sensitivity. We are introducing them with new beautiful colorways, a range of different contrast intensities. We thought about, hey, there's a student who might have light sensitivity in a classroom and there's a cart of machines and when they boot up, does their device look different than others? We don't want accessibility to be an othering experience. What's really unique about the startup sound, for some people with no vision, that's what they rely on to know that the computer's awake. The difference between the sounds is that they will follow the visual personality of Windows. So a person who is blind can actually enjoy the same difference of those light and dark themes audibly. It's really humbling to be able to see the impact that we're going to have in people's lived experiences. When someone with a disability starts using this new version of Windows, I hope that they feel a sense of belonging. Now, I, I think that's really powerful to know, right? We're, we're not just obviously another company um, tacking accessibility on after the fact, but it has been designed with accessibility in practice. Now, don't be displaced if you're using Windows 10 because it has all of the same features in Windows 11, right? Um, so I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, as we go through. Now, this is what your Windows 10 settings uh, tab looks like, where you can have a look at your system and your devices and your phone. And as we mentioned in the video, it used to be called ease of access. A lot of research went around in changing that for those that had disabilities and what it should be called. Unfortunately, I have a Windows 11 machine for you, you know, fortunate for you in this regard. So I will be showing the, the accessibility center, which again is the same as the ease of access center live during our demo. Okay. But I do have resources in this PowerPoint on how to use this ease of access center if you are running a Windows 10 machine. All right. And you can see this slide here, Windows 11 builds on the strengths of Windows 10, right? So you actually see here in Windows 11, these are all the features we have in Windows 10 for accessibility, touch gestures, on-screen keyboards, speed recognition um, commands, voice recognition, Windows hello, color filters, they're all there, right? And then in Windows 11, we improve upon them, right? We make them smarter. We make them more accurate, right? And you can see here how down the bottom we approve um, on them using a bit of AI in there. So everything that we show you, you should be able to do for vision, mobility, hearing, and neurodiversity. Now, I'm going to jump to a live demo. Let's have a look at some of these features. Again, this can be a dedicated session. I won't spend too much time on this because we do have a lot to get through today. But again, it's all about awareness for you, okay? So I'm just gonna back out of my PowerPoint right there. And down the bottom here, if you're using Windows 10, you would type ease of access, okay? So just the word ease of access. Uh, if you are using a Windows 11 machine, you will see the accessibility tab. And again, these features are at parity between the two. Okay, so ease of access for Windows 10, accessibility for Windows 11. And from here, you can do everything you need to make the device more capable for not only for your student, 
but also for yourself. You can actually see I use the accessibility features by default. My, my mouse pointer is nice and big and colorful. So I know where it is because I lose it all the time. You've seen people move their hand forward and back trying to, <laughs> trying to find their mouse. Um, but from here, you can increase you know, the text size, for example, of everything on your device if you have a visual impairment. I had laser eye surgery recently and I used these features like you would not believe, right? So increasing my text size. Having a look at the visual effects, transparency effects for those that have those visual needs. Maybe turning off the animations um, if they do affect you in a very negative way, which I have seen it happen for students, right? Changing the cursor size, okay? And the cursor color for those that need it. I do this when I'm teaching at the front of a room, for example. I'm just going to bring this uh, down right there. Okay. Uh, so a lot of contrasting, a lot of inverted colors, a lot of customization around these colors. We have our, obviously, magnifier. You can actually see me use the magnifier when I'm presenting or highlighting or talking about different aspects, right? And the drawing tool that we obviously have uh, here as well. The zoom levels to make things a bit more accessible and the zoom increments. Inverting the colors, right? Uh, on a screen that you can turn on or off, okay? So again, this can be a dedicated session. Uh, I won't go into these in detail. It's an awareness piece to show you that this is all possible, right? Um, I actually use the grayscale filter uh, when I'm reading late at night. It gets rid of a lot of that blue light. We now have a night light or night mode built into Windows as well. So I actually use a lot of these features such as inverted, right? Grayscale, maybe um, red, green, or those that have colorblind, that, that are, I should say, colorblind or need some kind of assistance like when I had my... Um, my laser eye surgery per se, right? We also have different themes, right? So having a dark theme, for example, or having a, you know, a certain color theme for those that need that visualization. Um, and then it just, it just keeps going on. You saw some of the sounds for understanding that the computer's booting up for those that need that audio cue, right? Personalizing the lock screen, um, and how some of those work with our audio cues within the accessibility. We have our narrator, okay, for voice, braille aspects that we have here. We have a lot of natural voices now too, which is very, very interesting, right? So let's face it, the voices sounded a little, uh, <laughs> a little robotic, uh, not going to lie there. So if I bring this website across, okay, and I will send this to your leadership team, all right, in case you'd like to access this. This is our guide for people who have language or communication disabilities, all right? And this is for Windows 10 and Windows and, and Office applications. So you can actually see here, we have a dedicated Microsoft Disability Answer Desk, which is very useful to know, right? It, it is an answer desk solely dedicated to help those that need assistive features, right? And they will guide you with this process. All right. And this guide here will basically teach you all the different aspects of using language and communication through the Accessibility Center. So, for example, ready, control, Windows, and then enter will turn on, right, the narration. Webinar chat window, input chat text type message here, edit, blank. Right. I can install new. Zoom it, zoom window, pane. New natural voices right so they don't sound too robotic they sound a bit more natural. grave accent so i Webinar click chat window narrate narrate settings window add natural voices add button alert from captions bradley reporting to everyone https colon double forward now, slash braid i call dot this the sandra sully dot com uh, forward slash event what, forward slash ad set microsoft like. catherine but what you'll zoom, notice zoom window, is that pain. obviously as you go through Windows 11, um, there are a lot of different Australian accents, right? We have New Zealand accents. We have English from Microsoft Catherine, aka Sandra Sully. It's not Sandra Sully, just FYI. I call it Sandra Sully. Microsoft James, right? Microsoft. Choose a voice, 
Microsoft James. And then we English, have these add Australia, natural language. Select a natural voice to install window, Microsoft right. Aria. So settings, there's, there's a lot of accessibility. I'm just going to turn off G. my narration as we go through here because um, I don't think we're going to have the narration on reader. the entire time. But that, that's a, a case in point, right, on using the accessibility feature. Um, so there's a lot of ease of access options that you'll find on this link after the fact that you can go through and use a lot of these uh, hotkeys. You know, read aloud on your screen using the text-to-speech narrator. And then you can see here all the different types of shortcuts that you can use, right? Um, we have used the magnifier, which I'm using, right? Just to kind of highlight the content on the screen, right? Control, Windows, M, you know, things like that, that will really help you not only do teaching and learning, but help you focus, all right? Improve visibility by contrast, chain text and other items. So there are plenty of features there. Uh, we are unfortunately going to move on. That can be a dedicated session because we do a whole hour just on Windows language and accessibility. Um, there are a few things I did not touch on, but I'm sure if you ask questions after the fact, the answer will be yes. We have everything from eye tracking, right, in Windows, like eye tracking, so you can use your eyes um, to follow through with the screen. But you can see they're, they're in topics right? You've got the narrator's voice, verbosity. You can see their mouse and keyboard, right? So changing the keyboard layout, bringing up a digital keyboard, changing the cursor, Braille. So use Braille display with narration, right? And then you have, uh, if you keep going down, some closed caption uh, features, or I should say up, more or less built in here. Do not forget the search, right? We do have our search Function. So if you do have audio on your device, you need those closed captions, again, built into Windows. It's your first landing port of call to assist those that might need some of these um, uh, visual needs, okay? And you can see we even have live captions, right? That can be captioned live on your screen when videos are playing, right? So it says here, set up live captions to continue. I can set the caption options, the style, uh, filter any profanity that comes through, right? So before they'll just, you know, standard caption. Now you can change the color and the size and everything you need for captions on Windows. White on black, small caps, large text, yellow on blue. There's a lot, okay? So we can circle back on that for a dedicated session if you are interested. All righty, let's keep going uh, because I, I get very excited about all the different aspects that you can do uh, within accessibility on Windows alone before you get to Office. So there's plenty of resources there. Again, don't worry about it. We have them for Windows 10. I've got a bunch of links. We have them for Windows 11. I have a bunch of links. You will get a copy of all of these slides. So let's talk about when you leave Windows and you start to go into other applications, especially for Office or teaching and learning, right? Create accessible content. Now, I'm sure everyone has seen what we're looking on the screen, which is a GIF showing how to check accessibility, right, of your um, work or application in this regard, okay? And this is changing very, very fast. Soon we're adding some very powerful AI, probably heard of open AI, to aid with accessibility, okay? Um, and the accessibility checker is built across Office. So for example, if you're using Sway, right? You have the accessibility checker. Sway is our, our website tool, by the way, which is a fantastic Office tool. I recommend you check that out. And our accessibility view, right? That you can turn on for a Sway if you want, maybe you're using Sway. Prior to that, you saw checking accessibility for Word, right? Maybe you're using OneNote, okay? Again, you can use it to check accessibility for uh, your content to make sure before you distribute it to students, it is in an accessible format. We are going to talk about this live captions very soon too, right? PowerPoint, same thing. I actually went through yet last night and made our PowerPoint deck accessible using accessibility checker, right? So if I press escape, bring my PowerPoint across 
for those that haven't seen it, and I'm sure you have seen it, right? Just search for accessibility checker, okay? Sorry, my Zoom functions in the way. <laughs> Click that. You can see I only have a few missing audio and subtitles. I'm, I'm sorry, I did not get time to put the subtitles on that video. I was just going to stream it, but then I heard about your cool captioning feature. Um, and then I, I had to check the reading order for a screen reader, for example. So if I went to slide one, verify, I made sure it would read this in an accessible way. So for example, right, it would start at the Microsoft logo, which is this one, and then it would read um, left, to, well, left to bottom, and then over to the right to the picture and just explain the picture right at the end, right? So yes, do be mindful that we do have our accessibility checker built in, and we use this all the time. Um, we can generate AI text for images, for example, if you'd like to you know, write a description on an image. It's a bit hit and miss, kind of be very honest, but it is going to get very, very good, okay? And you can see at the top here, PowerPoint has a bunch of accessibility features built in, right? Which we'll get to. For example, my subtitle spoken language is in Australian because I'm speaking Australian, but maybe I would like it in Arabic when I'm presenting, right? And I'm just trying to move my screen because I have um, I have my uh, Zoom control. But if you'll notice, just in PowerPoint alone, if I start my presentation again, give it within a few seconds, you'll see Arabic where I have set it is starting to display on the screen. Now, the good part is that we support 136 different languages, right? So you can imagine if you're in a room or using a lecture, um, you can see how this would play a really, really prominent role, right? So just teasing you a little bit um, about some of the features that we have there, okay? So that is Accessibility Checker. Again, can be a dedicated session if you are interested in that. I am, I am just start teasing you a little bit there. All righty. So this brings us to our language and speech component, okay, within Office. And this is where it gets very interesting because, oh, sorry, my Arabic's going to continue on there. I'll turn that off in a second. This is where I, I really focus on, you've seen Microsoft's commitment to accessibility, okay, right? We have websites and we have tons of information uh, to show you about how we design and use Windows, how we built it into Office. Now I'm going to show you some various examples across Office. Again, just a taster on how we can make, obviously, Office, the work that we have for your students, much more accessible than any other product I've ever seen, right? Ever, <laughs> which is very exciting. Um, I am just going to turn them off because I'm sorry. I don't, do not want them to distract you as I go through. All right. So we're using a lot of AI, right? to improve people's lives with disabilities. Everything from image recognition to speech recognition and natural language recognition. So you can actually see here, PowerPoint alone has uh, embedded clickable audios. Now this is nothing new, so I could hit play here. Yeah, sure. So I work uh, as a data and applied scientist with Microsoft Security Response Center. Right, and we can embed audio. We can embed visual elements, right? That, that's not too new, but you can do it in Office. I, I know a lot of staff that will have an audio file to support their visual language on screen. So do be mindful that we do have um, these features. It's always nice to use some of these great tools. Which... Right, especially for if you know what your audience needs. But this does expand out to some very, very interesting places, forms, OneNote, Teams, word case in point right this is a story planning sheet for a year nine boy who was dyslexic okay hard to follow really hard to see the flow of ideas and structure now i've seen this with TAFE students i have seen this with university students right there's no age limit to your mobility issues or your ability to you know process information the same child wrote this story using their voice. It was a mobility issue that the student had and using the dictation tools, um, the exact same passage, 
right? Same thing with a seventh grade student in this regard. I've, again, I've seen this with 19, 40 year olds, 35 year olds. I mean, I write terrible. I like not to say doctors write terrible. I, I, I write absolutely terrible. Um, and again, the same thing, using a different tool for an accessible means. So I'm going to show you some of these tools, right? Very exciting to see some of these tools. So let's jump out of here. I'm just going to shrink this. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen, you know, Immersive Reader before. I've just opened up a Word document. Not so accessible. Okay. I do have dark mode on. I suffer from spatial crowding. There's a lot of words on the page there. I could be an international student, right? So you can see light, dark. We do have our immersive reader. And I believe Connor did show immersive reader, okay, which is built across office. And just a quick rehash if you haven't seen immersive reader, immersive reader allows you to tailor the experience. I'm just turning off all of my features here because it will remember your tailored settings, right? Turn everything off. So, you know, it's not very accessible right now. A lot of white negative space, a lot of spatial crowding. Immersive read will take something on a page and allow the user to increase the font, increase the spacing, change the text for those that, you know, have uh, autism because there's a lot of the research around students or users that have autism and changing how the text actually looks. I process information easier with a white background on a dark um, plane. That's just how I process it. But in, in class, in university, when we, you know, we'll be teaching, we have students that need an overlay. They say the headaches go away with a blue theme, for example. We can now digitally put them on. And for those that um, may need the identification of nouns and verbs and adverbs, especially international students that are struggling to learn the language in your class, you can now highlight them. But what about those that are colorblind? Show the labels. Okay, break them up into syllables. So N for noun, purple, right? Um, for for the noun, or maybe I'd like to change that to blue for the nouns. Okay, and of course our line focus probably the tool I needed as a little uh, crazy child that would get very distracted. You can have that line focus to really focus on your content. Picture dictionary so you can understand pictures with associated words, and of course our pronunciation of the word. Rainforest. Our text to speech. Rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is an expansive forest located in the Amazon basin. And of course, our translation features 136 languages. So by the word. Forest. In Danish. Skull. Right. Or by the document. Amazonas Rainskull. Amazonas Reinskov er en ekspansiv skov beliggende i Amazonas basinet. Now I'm not going to spend too much longer on immersive reader because I'm I'm sure you have seen immersive reader before. Really powerful to go from that to that, right? It is game changing. So yes, again, can be a dedicated session around immersive reader reader but a lot has changed in office so while we're speaking of assistive tools right yes you have immersive reader to process information right but what about contributing information right we have our new dictation function now dictation's been around for a while this has some ai magic on the back end here so what i'm going to do is just turn off dictation set it to english australia okay Enable auto punctuation, no, right? But if I had a mobility issue, you can see, and I speak very fast in general, I've slowed this down for you, but you can see everything that you need to say or, or could say to edit your document here, okay? Oh, no, I have it in Arabic. Let me change the language. And this is great. You can select the language, there we go, <laughs> of choice there. I was like, uh-oh, I'm going to have to use Immersive Reader. Um, so. For example, let me show you the power of dictation and I'll speed up, sorry, closed captions. I'll speed up a little bit here for you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, comma. My name is Andrew and I'm providing a demonstration using dictation, full stop. You will notice that as I chat and discuss, it takes a second to process the grammatical changes 
in the cloud. Full stop. Start list. What I'm doing right now is demonstrating how you can start a list and edit a document solely using your voice. Full stop. Next line. You can pretty much change an entire Word document using your voice. And I use this more than ever before. Full stop. End list. Delete the last two words. Pause dictation. Isn't that great? Solely using my voice. It is a very, very powerful tool. Um, so yes, uh, someone said recently discovered dyslexic font. Can that be important to immersive reader? Yes, they are bringing dyslexia fonts into Windows and into um, uh, uh, all of Office from my understanding, right? Is Comic Sans recommended for a font and improved disability? Yeah, there's a lot of studies around autism and Comic Sans. I'll see if I can provide that research in post. But that's that's a, an example of dictation combined with immersive reader. Really really powerful aspects okay we also have our transcribe features built across office and i'm not sure if you have seen transcription before and how transcription works it is incredible right again so many languages supported here right and sometimes students or you have an audio file or a video file that needs a script to be auto generated with it so you can upload an audio file or you can start recording Okay. And maybe I'm in a lecture or maybe I'm having an interview with a student. It will use AI to automatically separate the speakers and then create a transcript of everything that you're discussing, right? So I can click save and then um, do the transcription. So someone just asked, yeah, is there a, a time cap? There is, right? 300 minutes per month. However, we have some other tools that don't have time caps that I'm going to show you today. So what that will do is upload that to OneDrive, transcribe that entire part of speech, put it in your document. All right. So you can actually see there, here's my recording, hit play. And maybe I'm in a lecture or maybe I'm having an interview with a student, mm -hmm. add to document with text, with speakers, with timestamps, with speakers and timestamps, right? So then that will process that transcript in the cloud and put everything just down there. All right. It will take a moment because it's it's AI infused, right? So it's actually very, very uh, powerful, right? And how you can use some of these tools. Jumping over to say something like OneNote, right? And this is where it gets very interesting. Here's a OneNote um, page, right? I'm sure you've seen OneNote before. You know, we're learning about international studies, okay? One of the biggest issues that we generally have, especially for students, okay, if I reload this page, is that you could be at the front of the class teaching. They could speak Italian or Arabic or whatever it may be, right? And uh, let's jump into you know, international studies in this regard. We have these live captions that can be beamed to every student's computer for accessibility right so i could have a student that speaks spanish and chinese and danish and whatever it may be but what this allows us to do is provide a live feed to everyone's computer that needs it in the click of a beat right it is powered by our microsoft translation tool which i will show you okay and I don't know if you've heard of Microsoft Translator for accessibility or creating scripts or basically communicating with many cultures in the same space. I'll show you how this works, right? I will send this website to our lovely leadership team, translator.microsoft.com, okay? How I teach, especially with students from different cultures, those that come to tertiary or higher education, dangle this on a lanyard, just your phone, around your neck and you have an instant translation device to every workbook within your classroom. All right. And I'll show you how this works. I think 300 caps has been removed. I will check that. Interesting. 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 Now this is app powered. 
All right. So I'd love to show you this right now. I'm going to beam my mobile phone on screen. I know that sounds a bit weird, <laughs> but uh, that's what's going to happen right now. So I'm going to bring this across. Welcome to uh, Mr. Bowser's mobile. Okay. And there is a translation uh, app in here. So a lot of Office have apps. Okay. Lens, List, Microsoft 365, right? That's a great thing about, about Microsoft. But if I type in translator, you'll see we have an app here, okay, which talks to the website. So uh, right here in my translation app, you can see well, I can do English, Spanish, Spain. There are hundreds of languages. I mean hundreds of languages, all right? And this is going to talk to Office, right? which is a really, really powerful tool, okay? So I could start, you know, a translation right here. And as you can see, as I go through, I'm speaking in English, okay? And it's having it in Spanish. This can translate five languages at a single time, but also keep a transcript of everything that's happening on that device. So if I'd like to start a new conversation, as you can see here, right? Um, here's my join code, KJQXG. And again, don't worry about doing this. Just know that it is possible for now. Guess where that code goes in, right? I could put it in here and join the conversation if I'm on the web. So I could be, for example, someone that speaks, let me just bring my browser over here, German. All right. So I would like to join this conversation and I want everything to come through in German, okay? So I'm going to put that code in, right, which is KJQXG. It's going to bring my window back across so you can see. I'm going to click Join Conversation. And as I will speak, everything will come up in German just on the web website. But this is where it gets incredible for accessibility, okay? Going back to my class notebook, right? My OneNote class notebook that we'll demonstrate. You probably get the idea on where we're going with this. You also put the code in there, A-J-Q-X-G. Then the students can have that language of choice being beamed to their digital notebooks or beamed across the classroom, right? So I'm going to enable my microphone on my lovely app. We're going to join this conversation and as you can see as i talk it's going to bring live captions to their digital notebooks right where they can translate this transcribe this because that's what it's doing live they can you even use highlighters to highlight certain parts of speech and or add it to your word document so this student here is uh looking at what i'm talking about or what i'm saying in english okay this student who has joined by the website, okay, could have this in uh, German. I am logged in with Bowser. So I'm having this in, in English, right, in this regard. And then even if they're using a mobile phone, as you can see here, my translation feature is running, but beaming it to so many different places, right? That is the power of Microsoft Translator. Now, if you are watching this live, right, um, you can join if you like, okay? I will uh, hold that there for a second. Translator.microsoft.com. We'll see if anyone joins the conversation. The code is KJQXG. Pick a language of your choice and watch the language come through live to your device, no matter where you are in the world, right? I am the one speaking. So therefore, you will see this live. So I can see Phil. Congratulations, Phil has joined our... Oh, Justin. Hello, Justin has joined our conversation. Try not to pick English just because obviously defeats the purpose. If, I mean, you can have it for accessibility. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Lovely to meet you and have your acquaintance. Um, ah, yeah, there you go. So yes, you can definitely change this. Um, but yeah, translator, really powerful. Very, very powerful tool, especially for language and communication. A lot of users don't know it exists, 
They don't know that we have such fantastic tools. They don't know that you can beam this to digital notebooks in OneNote, as you can see here on the right-hand side. Now, the magic about this is that sometimes your lecturers or your teachers are going too fast, right? So the student can pause or the user can pause the translations so they can go back and read, but it will autofill everything that they've missed when they resume. It's constantly capturing. So as you can see here, I've ended on teachers are going too fast, but if they hit resume, it will capture everything I've said in between. Okay. As you can see here, we have many people joining <laughs> our translation uh, features right here. We've got, you know, uh, Mr. Bowser, who's the host. And then we have Phil, who has Chinese on. We have Justin, who has English. We have Sarah, who has uh, Polish translation. We have Aki, who has Filipino translation coming to their device. We have Catherine, who has traditional Chinese. Sorry, this is in German, so I'm doing my best. Um, Tracy has, uh, not sure that one is in German, but I could translate that one there. Um, could you please add the code into the chat? Sure, not a problem. There, I can do that. And I'm, I'm just hanging on this one just for a little bit. Um, just because I think this one's really important. It's a great, great tool, uh, especially with language and communication. I don't see anything that does anything near this uh, as well. So we have Indonesian, English, Danish that I can see, Thai. We have uh, Filipino, Polish. Now, it's not perfect, all right? Let's be honest, but it is a very versatile tool that you can send to one note um this is all in german so i i <laughs> i'm sorry i said it to german but you will see here you can have it read aloud so you can actually set it so it will read aloud in your language of choice even if someone's speaking chinese or japanese or danish or arabic it can read it aloud for headphones right you can also translate this into multiple languages so you can have five translations happening all at the same time right? Five languages all at once. So it will do Danish and Polish and German. I don't know how bilingual your guests are, but uh, it can happen, right? So um, yeah, unfortunately, I believe this is... Oh, I have it in Dutch. Sorry. I have it in Dutch. Let's update that. There we go. Right. So you can actually see here, there's English, there's Dutch, right? That you can see there, the, the multiple translations. Um, you can leave your mic on, you can play speech output, show the original message from what it's translated, show partial messages. So say if I was interrupted in speaking that didn't finish, right? So you can kind of fill in the blanks. And then additional translation languages, I have German selected. So uh, I can add, let's say, um, Chinese simplified as well. So now I have it in English, I have it in German and I have it in Chinese simplified and it's all coming from my mobile phone right now, right? Isn't that incredible? It's really, really incredible. Um, so yeah, sorry, Roxanne. Um, yeah, so you, you, yeah, you enter the code. I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some follow-up resources. I think that's going to be the best way so we can keep moving along because I, I do want to stick around for some questions, right? So that's a very powerful tool, especially how it comes through on digital notebooks. If you have a class of 50 or 80 in the room, they can all have a tailored experience, right? Isn't that great? Absolutely fantastic. And then I can save the transcript to my notebook, right? All right. Now I'm going to end uh, translation. That is translator.microsoft.com. Please keep your devices ready, okay? because there'll be a conversation that's ended by the host, download the transcript, right? Very powerful. Yes, I promise resources. I promise I wouldn't tease you <laughs> showing you the art of possible and then not making sure you have the time of day to go and play and explore. So I will provide some uh, resources around translation. Now that's great. Obviously great for language barriers, obviously great for ELAD students, obviously great for those that speak English, but, but need to read it. I need to read it. I use translations all the time, all the time, 
in English. I just set it to English because I, I that's how I process information. But also having the ability to do live translation via audio to headphones or whatever it may be. So I, I normally walk at the front of the class. I have 30 different cultures. We're all on the same page. We're all unified. We're all connecting. We're all communicating. Now that's that's translated at Microsoft.com. Let's head on over to a very popular product that I'm sure you've heard of before, right? It's called PowerPoint. We can do some very similar things in PowerPoint, which you probably don't know, right? So I have PowerPoint open. This is our PowerPoint, by the way. This is our PowerPoint that I was presenting to you today. The only difference that you can see here is that it's in the web, right? I'm not presenting from my PowerPoint down here. As you can see, this is the desktop. I'm in the web, right? All of Office supports web applications, which is fantastic. And if you are in the web, some very interesting things pop up, right? Such as present live. Now grab a mobile phone if you have one ready. This is a hands-on <laughs> experience, this one here, okay? I am going to set it so everyone can join this presentation. Okay, so I'm going to click everyone. All right. I want to hit this present live button. And this is available to you, just FYI. Okay. What's going to happen? It's going to put a QR code up on the screen. Hmm. What's happening here, Mr. Bowser? How is this in relation to accessibility, language, and communication? Well, it's going to provide a number of needs. All right, it's going to provide some visual needs, but it's also going to provide some um, some closed caption needs and some audio needs and some translation needs, right? So as you can see, I can see the uh, number of people that are joining. I will put this into the chat. So you can, I, I recommend you try the mobile phone experience because realistically, that's what users have with them all the time. They don't carry a laptop around in the middle of a park or, you know, um, some batteries run out, you know, whatever it may be. I'll put this into the chat and you can click on this. It'll just pop it up in a browser. The first thing you will notice is that it has closed captions down the bottom, right? I haven't started the presentation, just FYI. So you've probably just seen the, the welcome screen. I can see people are finding the reactions. <laughs> That's good. But... I'll give you a true story. I was uh, a high school teacher, a hizzy teacher. I had a student come in who had Italian grandparents. They spoke Italian, very little English. Thank you for the reactions. I appreciate that. Very little. Um, you can see the visual feedback I'm getting already. Very little English. Uh, they were sitting at the back of a hall, just like you would in a lecture theater. Couldn't see. They could not see my slides. They could not hear me. Right, I had one of those very old projectors. The contrast was horrible. So we turned on PowerPoint Live. All right, I am going to take the QR code away. The link is into the chat, okay? And what this enabled was my presentation to beam to their device so they could zoom in by pinching and zoom. And this is what I recommend you do on your phone. Zoom in, have closed captions to their language of choice, right? So if I just paste that code in a browser, just so you can see what they see, right? This is what they see. So as I'm speaking, I'm presenting at the front of the room. It beams to their device, okay? As you can see, it's loading in. It has a transcript on the right. They can change this. Now, this does not support as many languages, but they are getting there. They've promised me they're getting there. A fair few, but not 136. So I could change this to German. They're sitting there. They're looking at the presentation at the back of the room or halfway through the room. It's translating to German for them. They can go at their own pace, tailored for them, right? Tailored for them. Now, you'll notice down the bottom of your phone or, or your browser, you can't move past where the presenter has presented, okay? So if I go, all right, welcome to accessibility. My name's Andrew. Acknowledgement of country, let's jump into it. I'm going too fast. You can now have a tailored experience and go back in your personalized copy of the PowerPoint, but not forward. So you can't be like, boring, boring, boring. Let's get to the answers. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> right. So now you have a tailored, visual accessible uh, form of accessing that presentation. You can visually see it. 
You can tailor it for your pace, or they can, I should say, and you can translate it to their language while you're speaking English. It's an individualized, tailored experience. It doesn't cost anything. It's 100% free. It's in office right now. People just don't know about it. Now I can turn off the closed captions. Gone from all of your devices. Sorry. Um, sometimes it's a visual need for accessibility using Office, right? And I'm hoping you're sitting there going, hmm, I could use this. I, I teach a class where we have 30 students. And even though we may be in a very small room, they might need this. So they, you know, you know what students are like in their mobile devices, their digital devices. They may need this to process information, right? I can re-enable the closed captions. So now the captions are continuing. Okay. And um, I'm not sure if I can jump to my slide here without exiting that. Yes, I can. So you can see there that the, the um, transcript. Now you can't download, unfortunately, the transcript from this lockdown experience, but that function is coming. It's not quite on par with Translator. Okay. In terms of the, you know, speech to, to text and um, the downloadable transcript, but it is a very powerful tool where someone can go back and look at their your presentation after the fact. No worries, guys. I understand some people may need to go before 1.30. So not a problem. So that is, again, a very, very powerful tool for accessibility. Now, if I end this uh, presentation here, I love this part, it will provide you with a survey. Now, this is not more or less around the accessible language and communication front, but it allows you to tailor your, your experience for next time. So how was the presentation? How was the slide design? So maybe, you know, I've got too much on a page. Maybe it's not visually stimulating. So let's go three. I'll be nice to myself. Uh, how was the speaker skill? Too fast, Mr. Bowser. Too fast. One, right? How was the content? You had a lot in there. It was interesting. Love to go through it after the fact. Five. Interaction with audience. Look, we're in separate places. So let's go with a solid four and then say, wow. What that does is that sends you a copy of the feedback so you can improve your design, right? Uh, really, really cool. Yeah, really, really cool. So, um, yeah, you know, I could be here all day, right? Showing you all of these little tips and tricks around language and communication. I am very conscious of time. And I, I do want to ensure that we leave enough time uh, for questions. But also cognitive overload is a thing. All right. I completely understand it's a thing. So I have paced this out to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm only going to show, <laughs> show you so much before we'll, we'll draw the line and we have more sessions. All right. Um, probably the last one around language and communication before we just jump into some resources on where you can go and read up and do courses and understand Microsoft's approach to accessibility uh, is, you know, we're here in Zoom, right? I get that. We are here in Zoom. Um, if you eventually move over to Teams, right, we have cart captioning support in Teams, right, where you can have a dedicated cart captioner. But we also have for our video conferencing language interpretation and sign language modes, right? They are so important for those that have disabilities. So how do these work, right? I have a lovely little article here, right, that I can show you. So for example, sign language mode that you can see here, if you'll sign someone to be a sign language um, personnel, right? I don't know what the official assigner, official name is. I'm sure there's a, a better official name than a signer, but it will prioritize the signers front and center of your session and also provide a transcript. This is great for hybrid learning. This is great when you're using accessibility out to a wider domain that's beyond your classroom or your teaching learning environment. You can see we have tailored captions. You can sign a cart captioner. You can sign language interpreter, and you can also assign a sign language signer right, which is really powerful. But also the slides that you beam to the individuals via Teams have accessibility built in. So we have Magnify, for example, which, which basically means that if we were doing this in Teams, you could zoom into the slides, but not affect everyone else. We have translation on those slides. So you can click a button and it'll translate all of the content 
on that PowerPoint that you're seeing, but not for everyone else, right? As you can see here, we even have view slides in high contrast for those that need the visual um, uh, accessibility as well. And it'll only affect your viewing experience when someone else is presenting their content, right? So there's a lot of uh, takeaways there, okay? Uh, in Auslan, yes. So the it's you basically assign someone right, to be that individual, like what we have today, right, for our captioner, but it's built into one ecosystem, uh, so to speak, with a transcript, closed captions, and then you can have a cart captioner who can go and rectify everything on the fly. So the AI works hand in hand with the cart captioner to make sure that, you know, they don't have to keep up like crazy um, because I speak very fast. <laughs> so they'll go through and mainly make the corrections but it is powered very soon by GPT uh, and OpenAI. And uh, maybe a conversation for another day is the Be My Eyes app, okay? I'm not sure if you've heard of Be My Eyes. I really hope you have. I really hope you have. It is an amazing app that allows a community to be your eyes for some of that needs, vision, accessibility, Okay. Uh, and you're probably thinking, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? So Microsoft partnered with an, a, an organization that developed an app to help those that need visual needs, all right? And I'm, I'm saying this in the context of communication, okay? And what Be My Eyes allows you to do is ask someone to help you remotely to be my eyes, right? And we can we can look at this again at another day, another time, right? Um, but I'll, I'll provide the resources for Be My Eyes because it is such a powerful, powerful tool. Um, it's this app here. Okay, again, partnership with Microsoft to improve our accessibility. You can see here the number of blind individuals that need someone to be their eyes and the number of volunteers that have signed up to be their eyes for any situation, right? So it will teach you how to answer a call. Maybe you need some help. This is the app that will come and help you if you need someone to be your eyes, right? It is fantastic. We have a blind and low vision community here that will aid them for accessible needs. I highly recommend you show students that do have accessible needs or even educators um, be my eyes okay but we'll um we'll get to that in another session i'm sure it's yeah, very very exciting okay i have five minutes before i am going to wrap uh my part of the presentation up i'm very conscious of cognitive overload uh, but again more sessions can be available uh if if needed not a problem let's talk about some of the resources that we have here because as you see uh there are well, it's uh, quite old. This is why I love Microsoft. They have, look, much more under the sun than any other company here. So the first one I would love to share with you is the Microsoft Accessibility homepage, of course, right? Which has lots of great information about promoting disability inclusion and how you can explore accessibility in Microsoft products and apps. So if you were inspired by some of the innovations I've demonstrating today for accessibility, you can explore how you can access that on Windows or Office or Teams if you liked some of that video conferencing or even gaming, right? We have a huge push for accessibility in gaming, right? So vision, hearing, neurodiversity, learning, mobility, and mental health, okay? Lots of websites here which will take you to information around accessibility. The second one, I want to share with you, and this is a very important one. This is our accessibility help and learning homepage, right? So how can we help you today? Maybe I'm interested in screen readers. Maybe I would like to have a look at what products support screen readers. I would type in here, screen reader, right? It's identified that to be an accessibility aspect. And you can see here, use a screen reader with the accessibility checker, right? This applies to Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
how to use accessibility of Microsoft Edge. Yes, we have accessibility built into our browser, which is fantastic, right? Out of the scope of today's conversation, I mean, I can show you it in terms of language and how we can translate everything in real time on a page, which is fantastic. But um, yes, like read aloud is here in the browser. Like, Support. Right, that will go through. Microsoft 365. Immersive reader is here. There's a lot of great functions. But yes, the accessibility help and learning. Okay, so maybe I would like to know about making my PowerPoint a bit more accessible. So that's a very, very powerful one. We also have our guide for people who have language and communication disabilities. Okay, so we can obviously uh, share that one there because this is more focused on Windows 10. And then obviously a lot of updates. I mean, like you can see here, I've got accessibility for mental health. I've got accessibility for mobility. Okay. Accessibility for learning. It's a deep rabbit hole. <laughs> Just know that we have tools and we have features built across Office to support accessibility. Okay. So that's the end of my live demo three. Hopefully there's a lot of very invigorating uh, aspects to consider around language and communication. Uh, if you'd like to take this journey further, we have a bunch of great videos. And again, I will share this PDF, this PowerPoint deck to your leadership team so you can access it on the website and you can watch these. You know, learn about Andrew, who is using learning tools for the first time. Learn about Justin, who's using Office to communicate with the world. Learn about Veronica, who was a student with low vision, who, who created a perfect website and Sway, our Microsoft Sway. A lot of great videos there. There's a webinar series around accessibility learning that you can watch that have been, they're on demand, but it's a great playlist. I mean, it's it's a fantastic playlist on all of these great accessibility um, features that we have. Look at this, the accessibility learning webinars, 21 videos, right, about how to use you know, Teams or how to use Now Radar or how to use live captions all in a video format, right? It's an absolute goldmine of, <laughs> of resources. Do-it-yourself accessibility, right? So we have a lot of um, do-it-yourself around eye control, text size, screen readers, if you want to do that play and pause. We have our accessibility at a glance videos, you know, just scrolling through PDF accessibility training. I'm sure everyone uses PDFs. How do you make them more accessible? Or how do you consume them and accessible? Office accessibility, and of course, Windows 10 accessibility. So I will share this, okay? So you can go through and have a look. Color filters, narration, low vision, closed caption settings. Um, make sure you're up to speed with a lot of these functions. But that's pretty much everything I'm going to show you today, just in the interest of time. Um, thank you again so much for having me. I'm going to stick around and ask any questions that anyone has, I'm sure there's, there's some questions there. So um, I'll, I'll pause and Excellent. then roll it to our leadership. Thank you very much, Andrew, um, oh, for sure. that. And I feel like, yes, we've been on a a, 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 um, a cognitive, I think you'd mentioned earlier before people got in the <laughs> Bowser from uh, Mario Kart or something. We've been on a bit That's of a right. hectic ride um, with, with lots of information, so much information there. So thank you very much for that. And I do appreciate that um, the information that you put into the slides and all the links and resources, which we will be making available on mm. the Adset website um, along with this recording and uh, correct captions, etc. But there's just look so much information there. I know Microsoft's done a lot of work, in, particularly in the last few years and with COVID. I don't know how many of us would have managed some mm. of the transitions during COVID without some of the tools that Microsoft's got there. And it's good to see that, you know, this is just the beginning as well for where some of these tools are going. Some of that AI interaction um, is, yeah, it's more than impressive. Um, okay, we've got a few questions there. I know you answered a couple along the way with, um, there was one there around Comic Sans being added in, um, you know, and some of those into the reader function into immersive reader and some of the tools is there an option to you know import your own font and not just have a set number yeah so what what the microsoft team have to do on the back end is, is make sure um that there's a lot of research around the fonts that are available they're adding more fonts at this point for immersive reader there isn't the ability to add customized fonts it's a 
less is more approach where you know how many fonts there are. There's like yeah. 300 fonts and people get very overwhelmed. So they go through a process of aligning the research with the fonts. There's a lot of research around Comic Sans and dyslexia and uh, autism, which is very, very interesting. I'll see if I can find that research article and that's why they've added that. But there are ways, obviously, around that for using learning tools in Word where you can set you know, a number of different fonts, changing the background. You can pretty much make a immersive learner experience just by turning on or off features without being an immersive reader, tailoring your Word document, changing the color background, changing the font size. So yeah, not at this point. They're not adding custom fonts for immersive reader, but again, you can make Watch it. this space. Yeah, you can make it. You can make it happen outside of immersive reader. Yep. yep. Um, another question here around the, the Microsoft dictation tool. Um, mm -hmm. Can you record two different languages interchangeably in the one session? Uh, with dictation? Yes. yes. So this is in, that's an interesting question. We support dictation in a number of what we call preview languages, which means that you could speak the native language and have it like to say, I'm speaking Italian, il palo di italiano, right? And then that will translate that into another language of your choice. It used just to be English to another language. Now there's a number of preview languages. Um, they put preview in brackets. When you go to the dictation settings, you will see uh, the preview languages. Preview is beta, just so you know. It won't be perfect. When it comes out of preview, it moves to a new list called supported languages. Can you do multiple at once? Yeah. No. Um, you do one language in dictation, change the language that you're speaking, and then do another language. Group transcribe, the one that I'll show on you, transcription, will do multiple, up to five at once. Yeah. So there you go. So each each voice can have its own input per se. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what else have we got here? We've got um, another one regarding immersive reader and dictate. Um, they uh -huh. tried using the editing prompts, and this might be one for another session as well, and had problems I have as well, where it doesn't necessarily recognize if you're saying, you know, new new paragraph, new line all mm. the time. Is there any tips or tricks there in terms of the speed yeah. that you say those? Or... Yeah, yeah. So it, it's very interesting. Um, the I use Word for the web, right? Um, I find that the web versions of dictation talk to the servers quite clearly. We, we've invested a lot with how that uh, neurolinguistic uh, processing works on the back end. It's getting so much better. Now, it's not going to be perfect. My advice would be have a very clear microphone, more or less. Um, you saw me do a live demo and it made almost pretty much zero mistakes. And I speak very fast. Um, I would use the web version have a, a like a dedicated microphone don't try and talk five meters away from your computer and maybe just slow down a little bit on your speech i find it to be very accurate in this day and age changing a few of those conditions like your environment i think you'll be quite impressed it's probably one of the best i've ever seen um out of all the different tools that are out there you know you remember dragon speak and some of those going back a few years um but yeah it's i would change those conditions but there's there's some learning modules too, right, on um, on the Microsoft Accessibility Center that you can go through and it will kind of tell you how to optimize that experience. But it's, it's getting very good, I must admit. Very good. It's not perfect, I will admit, but it is getting very good. Good question. Okay. There was a couple of questions at the time with the uh, uh, PowerPoint Live when you're presenting mm -hmm. live, and that yep. was uh, where to find that QR generation. That was at the start of that process. Yeah, yeah, great live. question. Great question. So it's for PowerPoint for the web right? That's the first thing you need to know. Okay. And then when you use PowerPoint for the web, right, you'll see a slide so slideshow section, right? Just like you, you normally do in a PowerPoint. And then under that, you see the present live, right? And that's where you'll find your ability to turn that QR code on, right? And you can lock it. So, no one so as soon as you stuff. hit that present live, it gives you that QR code that you can share. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. So, um, yeah, this is obviously where you, again, a lot of the errors will come up when someone has, you know, an external microphone, but it's thinking the webcam microphone is the main one. What is your spoken language? I should have changed that myself, Mr. Bowser. Right. So, um, you know, I'm English Australia, aluminum, aluminium, um, tomato, tomato. It does make a big difference and to add to that we localize our languages now in australia right we really push microsoft to say hey 
English US is not what we speak here. English UK is not what we speak here. So you'll find that localization across all of Office now where you can pick Australian as a localization for language. Yeah. So for just quickly on that, for each presentation, you'll get a unique code for correct. that session at correct. that time. So you can't reuse that code that that's is locked to that presentation. Okay, so correct. as you're presenting live, you get a unique code. Yep, yep, correct, 100%. Excellent. Um, thank you for that. Uh, sorry, just quickly looking through the last of these, we may not be able to get through all of these. Um, <laughs> okay. And I know probably in your resources, you might have already added some into the resources as well. Uh, is there specific, uh, there's loads of videos to watch, but can you point to particularly um, some video resources for ESL students on how to use Translator. Um, mm, yeah, look, we have a learning module on how to use Translator. It's designed for students, right? Yeah. It goes for about 50 minutes, just a small little free course that so they get a little certificate to say they've, they've completed the course. I can definitely share that. The uh, best place to go, right, to find self-paced courses, I'll put it into the chat. It's our new learning site. It's fantastic. Learn.microsoft dot com all right and uh we have an inclusive classroom even course there which i'd highly recommend um we can learn about all of our products obviously it's in the name and get certificates and badges to complement your learning at a cv and, and show evidence of practice really in those spaces so learn.microsoft.com you'll find a translation course at the microsoft translator course Excellent. Um, and Jeremy, we've got a question here about Translator. I think everyone was a bit blown away with Translator, um, showing that happening in all the languages. So lots mm. of questions around that. Um, and the question is, you know, if a student could ask a question back to the lecturer in their language of choice. So I'm yeah. sure that would involve both people setting up for input. Yeah, yeah. so it's really interesting, right? Um, when you set it up, right, um, you can choose to have the mic always on because I dangle it around a lanyard. So I just walk around the room and it's just constantly translating. Or you can choose it to have the push to talk. So it's off. You hold, obviously, the microphone. You say what you need to say. You let it go. That just stops a lot of the background noise and stuff coming in. So all a student has to do, if you enable it, is they just hold the microphone while they talk into their device and it will beam straight back to the lecturer's device. It's fantastic, right? They so best practice. Yep. Yeah, what they'll do is put the website up on a big projector so everyone can see a running transcript but then encourage each student to log in by their device or phone or browser and just have it running in the background so they can use, use it when they need it, but also access a transcript of the class or of the lecture or of the session after the fact, right? It just kind of goes off into the background. Yeah, it's, it's like a one-click setup and away it goes. It's a fantastic tool. Yeah, really. I think I've, I've seen it in action, um, mm. you know, with, with multiple people, and it, it's a sight to behold people interacting that, yeah. um, uh, that may have just sat there static in the past, just, you know, listing and trying to take it all in and I'll review it later. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm trying to absorb it all now, but it's just saying being able to, where having it in, in my preferred language at the time um, can be a game changer to that immediate mm. conversation. And, and look, happening. I use it for meetings, honestly. So I have a transcript of what's happening, like physical meetings that I'm not digitally in. Um, just so I have something to kind of go back and review, you know, I'll just have my phone just sitting on the table and it'll make a transcript for me. Yeah, it's Look, great. Um, I will we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, that was fantastic. Um, and as you did bring up during the presentation, um, and I'll let everybody know that the AdSet webinars um, that we deliver often come from suggestions and feedback from uh, people that take part in these and from practitioners, um, from people across the, the sector. And we, um, we absolutely fabulous when we get feedback from people around that. So we'd love if people complete a quick uh, survey that Kylie will put into chat there. And if any of the stuff that you mentioned today, maybe doing a session just around, you know, the colorblindness just around the narration mm -hmm. tool, just around translator, mm -hmm. you know, an individual session that might be um, worth diving a bit more in depth, please do suggest that into the survey and that will help us um, build, you know, certainly some future webinars and sessions that are relevant specifically to what people are after. Um, uh, another thing, please remember to register. We've got an upcoming webinar on inclusive assessment uh, for students with disability um, next uh, Tuesday. Um, but once again, thank you very much, Andrew, for that presentation today. Um, we generally don't do 90-minute uh, ones, but I think it was definitely worth it um, in this case. And we probably packed two hours of stuff into, into that 90 minutes. There's so much more to explore and go and use. So we'll make sure those resources are up there. So thank you for that. Thank you to Michelle from Bradley Reporting for the captions today. And apologies for some of the issues that were happening with that happening.
and Kylie for organising and wrangling um, the information and things in the background. But most importantly, thank you to everybody for coming along and participating in this webinar. Um, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone.